Hi and welcome to another episode of Rob's Triathlon Tips for Beginners. In this video I will go through how you can uh, do running in Zwift. Well, most people just do cycling in Zwift but I like to run on a treadmill um, for most of my running because it's easier on your joints. It's a cushioned ride. You can change the speed. You can force yourself to keep a certain pace. You can change the uh, incline of the treadmill to make it harder or easier and so I had to get on to, to Swift to do running so this video will will teach you how to do that if you don't know how to do that okay so to get running in Swift you're gonna need some hardware and some software so you're gonna need um, a treadmill obviously if you're gonna run indoors you're gonna need running shoes and you're gonna need um, some kind of speed sensor that's that can communicates over Bluetooth to Swift, and an optional thing you're gonna want is some kind of heart rate monitor. So I've got some tabs open here in my browser. So when I say a speed sensor, it can be one of two things. It can be this style. It's like a little pod. Um, this is what I have. It's called the Swift Pod, and it goes on over top of your, your shoelaces there's also one made by Garmin there's one called uh, whatever this one is polar makes one there's different companies that make them stride uh, Sun Sunto so and they're all gonna be compatible with Swift nowadays uh, I just got the Swift one and it works great you can also go with the fancier option, which is something more like this. So this will sit, you can see here's a picture of one, an older version. It'll clip onto the side or Velcro onto the side of your treadmill and it's like measuring the speed of the belt with a laser, I think. And I guess the danger with that is you could kick it or something and wreck it but it's probably more accurate either way these sensors like the the foot pod ones measure your your cadence too if you're into that uh, if you've got a target say 170 steps per minute or something you're trying to hit so you can see that on the screen in Zwift so I mean it's cheaper just to go with the pods uh, when you're starting out Uh, in terms of heart rate sensors, uh, let me just Google that now. Like Wahoo heart strap. Uh, this is the typical one that people will use. It takes a little bit to get used to it, but I mean, you can once you get it adjusted, it doesn't slip down or anything, and it it will give you a really accurate heart rate and you can see that on the screen in Zwift and so I would get one of those uh, there's ones that go on your forearm I believe I don't think they're quite as accurate and when you once you get one of these heart rate straps you'll see how inaccurate your watch is at measuring your heart rate <laughs> um, in terms of software, you're going to need to to create a Zwift account. And so you would just go to Zwift.com and there's a button here, create account. Now you can also navigate to uh, here, it says get started, click on overview, and then you click on the start running button. You need a treadmill, you need a, a speed sensor, you need to download Zwift. So most people will, will either use an iPad or a tablet with the Swift app on it, or I personally run on, on Swift through my Apple TV and because uh, I like looking at a bigger screen and I like having the option of using my iPad or my phone to play some music instead of just running Swift on it and if you're doing a long 
bike ride, especially your your phone or iPad battery might die on you, and then you'll get kicked out of Zwift, and you'll be kind of pissed off. You lost all that workout. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I'll film myself uh, using my Apple TV with some tips on that too uh, later in this video. So that's uh, software and hardware, and I'll show you my shoes with the actual pod on them next. Okay, so here's my my running shoes with the pod on them. Um, you know your pod's got a battery when you tap it, the little green light starts to blink. Uh, it's super easy to put on your shoes. Um, all you do is turn it to the left to pull it off and you see in the back there's a little slot that you turn to replace the battery and they're a very standard battery the 2032 battery and they last quite a long time I think I might use two or three tops in a year I mean, these are the same batteries that you're going to use in other sensors you might have on your bicycle or on the in your heart rate strap too. So it's worth just buying a big pack of them, and they last for a long time. Um, and then you can see there's this little plastic piece. It's got a slot for your laces to to go through, and you just slide that underneath the laces, and then you pop this back on and and twist it to the right to lock it in. And then, um, yeah, so that's on there. And it doesn't really bounce around and bother you. It's nice and secure. So here's my basement setup for running. I've got this older treadmill. It's made by Nordatrack. I think it's from Canadian Tire in Canada. A store kind of like walmart where you can buy a whole bunch of different things <laughs> sporting goods outdoor stuff and then over here i've got this tv and then um right here is the apple tv box okay so i'll show you uh using the swift app on my apple tv uh, to get the app you would just go into the App Store here it looks just like the icon on on your phone or your tablet and I apologize for the shaky video it's just me holding my iPhone and then once you got it downloaded it looks like that it's that orange icon and a tip I'll give you is to close Zwift in the app drawer just like on your phone or your tablet um, here's the remote there's an there's an icon here it's not really focusing on it looks like a little tv you double tap that and you pull up the app drawer lots of people don't know that and there's swift it's open and if you don't swipe up to close that sometimes you'll go into swift and the sound won't be working or something else will be wrong but that always fixes it to completely close it out When Zwift loads, you get a screen like this. You can have more than one user on it. So if you and your spouse or roommate both want to use Zwift, you can set up different profiles. And it scrolls through some statistics for how many hours and what distance you've done cycling and running. And you just click to go into it. takes a minute to load and you'll come to a screen like this where you go up and you pick whether you want to ride or run and this is where you synchronize sensors so run speed I've got my shoe I'm just, I just tapped on the this the foot pod to wake it up 
can see it popped up because it's previously been synced to Zwift. So it's gonna track cadence and speed. I'll turn the music down, sorry. And now I just need to pick a heart rate sensor, which I've got on and that's activated. So that's the one I want, Wahoo ticker. Now I'll scroll down to, okay. You can also just watch other people do Zwift. You can tap on their profile name and then see what they're up to, which is bizarre. I guess if you want to follow a professional or something, you can do that. Then you come to a screen like this where you can pick where you want to run. Just different worlds or cities. Autopia is like a whole world wrapped into one. Uh, all different landscapes and and weather and everything. Um, and then down in the corner, if you have a specific one you want to do, you can look at the schedule and, and pick a day where you can run in Japan or something, or France or Richmond or Innsbruck or New York City. Today, the three that are available are Watopia, London, and Yorkshire. And you can go into each of those and pick a route and you earn badges. There's only so many running badges you can earn. There's a lot of cycling routes that people have programmed. And then beyond that, you can pick if you just want to run. It says just run right now. Or you can go, okay, I want to do uh, fartlek intervals. And you can see now it says that, or you can choose to clear that and just run again. So I'll just scroll down to run. And I'll turn the sound on again. You can hear some nice music at the start. <laughs> Uh, so you get a sense here of what you get on the screen as there's more people around you on the right side There's a list of Zwifters nearby and that will be runners and cyclists and you can see their pace and how much they've run You can tap on them and give them a thumbs up uh, Up at the top here you get uh, The route you want how much is left 11.2 K How many kilometers per hour or kilometers period you've, or how long you've run you can go into the settings and change it to uh, Imperial like you hit the menu and you go over here to the settings and then you can just flip it in here um, up on this this side you've got splits so over every kilometer you run You'll get a split, you'll get your average heart rate for that kilometer. You'll get your cadence. So you get the live data up here, cadence and and your pace and your heart rate and it tells you what heart rate zone you're in right now. I haven't done anything, so I'm blue. Um, what else can I show here? So you can pull up this menu and you can change views. camera views get rid of the person you can look yourself from the side check out your outfit from behind you can look behind you there's a helicopter view there's a view of you from oh, there it goes that's <laughs> kind of neat um, you can turn around you can chat with people. You can see the elevation changes. You can ride give ride-ons, thumbs up to people. You can say, hey, that's not fair with the, the sort of the gavel. You can click on the toast icon and it says, I'm toast. That's not really. <laughs> you can click on this guy. Bye. Yeah, it's <laughs> so it 
It's got lots of features. Um, let me see if I can... I'll put my shoes on and I'll walk on my treadmill so you can see the guy moving. One thing I forgot to mention when you get to this screen where you're looking at pairing devices, uh, there's a wrench next to the run speed sensor and you click that when you're first using Zwift and every once in a while if you think it's not registering your speed properly you're going to want to run this device calibration and you pick three different speeds that you're going to run at slow normal fast and you run for a couple minutes and it calibrates the speed sensor properly and then you won't get frustrated that Zwift is telling you you're running way slower than you should be according to your treadmill. So that's what the wrench is for. So there you go, I'm going uh, measly three miles an hour walking. You can see someone walk past me. So that's really neat. Um, this, I prefer to have Swift on a big screen. It's more immersive. And then I have this here where I can, on my treadmill, I can plug in my phone and run music through the speakers. So what else is neat about Swift is you level up. So I'm level 18. There's a little icon there. Uh, that orange bar is me getting closer to being level 19 and as you go you you earn different pieces of kit so you can change the way your runner looks you can join challenges so you go into the garage and you can customize the way your guy looks you know I got these this green camo and these socks recently and you can give yourself a beard or whatever make your shorts longer <laughs> so that's kind of fun and it's same thing on on the bike you can earn a cooler bike um, and then customize the way you look you can ride with or without a helmet different kinds of helmets bike gloves etc so that's kind of fun get gamifying it basically so i'll show you what happens when you end a run um so I'll hit the menu here and I'll say and run and it starts to bring up a summary. I've walked a hundred meters. <laughs> you can see where you went on the map. Uh, you can, who you ran with, you click okay and you have the chance to save it to Strava or Training Peaks or whatever, or you can just trash it on the right side of the trash can. If you choose to do a workout, uh, this is what you'll see on the screen. You see uh, there's kind of in the center, it's telling you to set your treadmill to this many kilometers an hour. You can change that to miles per hour. And then you see all of the, the different parts of your workout as you work through them. On the left, it gives you a warning of what's coming up uh, when you're increasing your speed to what speed, for how long, when you're getting a break. So that, it's it's a it's a really great interface, and this that's a coincidence. You see this person with this funny blue thing in front of them. That means they're doing a workout, <laughs> and when they're doing a really intense part of their workout, the screen changes to an orange or a yellow color. But I'm not doing anything, so mine is just in front of me, looking kind of blue. One thing I didn't touch on is something called the Zwift Companion app. So there's two apps. There's Zwift, which is the orange icon, and then you can get this the Zwift Companion app, which is a kind of light blue icon. You can get that on your phone or on your tablet. And what that lets you do is control certain things from your remote device even though you may be running Zwift through your TV. And so here's a screenshot of what it looks like on your phone. Basically, once you get into Zwift on your TV, you open up the companion app on your phone or your tablet, and it's it, it takes a couple seconds to realize that you're 
in Zwift, it kind of synchronizes and this map pops up where you are. And then you're good to go from there. And that's how you can take photos, screenshots of what you see on your TV. You see here, there's a, a little camera icon. You would just tap that on your phone and then it takes a, a screenshot and when you're done your workout you'll see all the screenshots that you took on your TV and you can select and deselect which ones you want to upload to Zwift and to whatever you're synchronizing to like Strava <laughs> so that's one reason to use the companion app uh, it also has a, a neat interface for workouts so this is what that would look like for fartlek intervals. You can see up at the top, I'll zoom in. This is showing you the relative length and intensity of intervals for your workout. And then there's this sort of speed dial and it's saying for your warm up, run this for eight minutes. And when you start running that within this blue range, you'll see a dial in there to say you're kind of dialed in, right? And that'll change as your intervals get more intense. And there's also a neat button for bias. In other words, if you start the workout and think this is too easy or it's too hard, you can just hit the plus or minus. And it'll adjust the difficulty of all of the intervals left in that workout. So that's a really interesting, useful feature. And then the last thing to really touch on is uh well there's you can message people you can give people thumbs up through the companion app which is easier to do than the tv and you can also connect bluetooth devices uh through your phone by going into the the, the more at the bottom right and then under settings you you pick device connections and you turn on that bluetooth setting and then that can help you if your Apple TV is telling you that there are too many sensors connected to it. And, and then you can use Swift Companion to synchronize those sensors through your phone or your tablet. Hopefully you found that video to be useful. If you did, please give it a like. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and share the video with people who may benefit from it. Thank you.